I just have a few minutes, so I'm going to tell you one story. And it's, it's true. I always have to tell people before I tell them the story, because inevitably someone comes up to me after the show and they'll be like, was that true? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, was it? I don't know how to respond to that. Like, I guess I could say it louder. Like, yeah! And they'd be like, it's probably true. He said it louder. <laughs> but it's, uh, when I was about 19, I had a malignant tumor in my bladder for about a week. But it's funny because, stay with me, because uh, I'm a hypochondriac. And I think the funniest thing that can happen to a hypochondriac is they get cancer because it confirms every fear you've ever had in your life. You're just like, see, I told you. <laughs> Remember last week when I was overtired and I thought I had rickets? I was probably right about that too. There's gonna be a lot of changes around here, you know? And uh, well, I found out I was driving home uh, for a Christmas break from college from Washington, D.C. to Massachusetts. Those are places in America. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Halfway home, I stop at a, a rest stop to pee. I don't mean to be graphic, this is just what happened. There was blood in my pee. I know, how do you think I felt? Uh, I knew it could mean like five things, and three of them mean I die, and the other two aren't exactly a trip to the Bahamas either. And so I get home like 2.30 in the morning. I woke up my dad, I told him what happened. And he, he had a very grave look on his face because he's a doctor, so he knows about the Bahamas. And he took me... Uh, <laughs> He took me to see a urologist. Now, I didn't know at the time what urologists do. I was very naive, and, and I, we went in, and I, he goes, uh, could you put your hands on the table? And I was like, all right, I can put my hands on the table. And then he stuck his finger, huh, huh, but I didn't know that was gonna happen. And so I shouted, I go, oh my God! And he got mad at me, he was like, cut the theatrics! And I felt so bad. I was like, sorry about the theatrics, you know, I guess, as though I had intended it. Like, this will be my big moment. <laughs> when he sticks his finger up my ass, I'll prove I should be the star of our town, you know. I, <laughs> so he goes, listen, Mike, you got to come in tomorrow morning for what's called the cystoscopy. And doctors always dress this stuff up. He goes, it's no big deal. You come in, they put an IV in, you fall asleep, you wake up, you eat a muffin, you go home. I was like, all right, you know, that sounds pretty good. Uh, still a little shaken up from the table incident, but uh, just, just out of curiosity, like what is specifically a cystoscopy? And then he picked up a rod that was about four feet long, and he goes, there's a camera on the end of this, and we stick it through your urethra to look into your bladder. And I said, I feel like you glossed over a few details in the initial description. <laughs> I feel like there was too much emphasis on the muffin and not enough emphasis on the fishing rod. You're sticking into my number three body part on E's top 100 sexiest body parts. And he said, I concur. And the next morning, <laughs> that might be a fabrication that I concur. And, uh, <laughs> while I was under, they found something with the scope. They find like an item, you know, and they decide that they're gonna keep me under and then put me under further so that they can take it out. So they put me under the street equivalent of horse tranks. <laughs> I don't react to drugs very well. I'm the guy, if you're ever smoking pot in a group, who's like, do you guys hate me? You know, like, who's at the door? Who's at the door? Who's at the door? Who's at... Why does my heart hurt? Is that rickets? You know, I'm not, I'm not proud of that, right? I'm not just who I am. So I w my voice gets very loud, too. I wake up in the recovery room. It's mostly elderly people. But in my brain, it was like a dance club. I was like, this place is awesome. We should come here all the time. I don't know why we didn't come sooner. Dad's always here. And my mother's mortified. She's like, shh. I was like, oh, all right. Do you hate me? Yeah. <laughs> so we get, we get home and uh, it's, a it's a waiting game with all this medical stuff. For about a week we had to wait for the biopsy to come back. And so for a week in my life I thought I might die, which is an incredible experience if you ever have the chance. Because you'll talk to God even if you're not sure there's a God. You'll just talk to anyone who might be available. You'll just be like, God, Allah. The elephant thing from Hinduism, Harry Potter, like is anyone available?
because I'm brand loyal to Jesus, but I'm not stubborn. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I was raised Catholic. I very much. I, I was an altar boy as a kid, and the answer is no. Uh, I wasn't. And uh, well, I, th I think it's because they knew I was a talker. You know, I have that look about me, and I. I was so bad at it, I think they thought, well, if he's this bad at lighting candles, wink, you know, that kind of thing, but like, well, the point is, the point is that I was very fortunate, you know, the biopsy came back and it turned out that they had found a malignant tumor in my bladder, but that they caught it early enough so I didn't have to come back, except every six months as a precaution, I have to go in for one of these. I know. <laughs> but it's okay. Because afterwards, I eat a muffin. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you around. And this was her argument. She goes, what if one of those illegal immigrants that we see in the neighborhood tries to break into the house and rape me? I'm like, what do your fantasies have to do with this? Never hear your fat friend say something like, No, I really shouldn't. <laughs> you walk with your fat friend, middle of the night, you want to stop for some pizza? Hell yeah.